ask me why I am discussing a case gone wrong. Because I believe that when you see your failures, you learn more. Because those are the cases we realize that, oh, this I shouldn't have done. So I'm trying to show a case which didn't do well, because there are certain things which I didn't have at that point of time. And maybe it would have done differently if we had done it today. So this was almost 22 years ago, 19, uh, 2001. 78-year-old female, bilateral ONE, BMI was 35, diabetic, hypertension. And that's a pre-op X-ray. And I had done an all-poly PFC TKR that was quite, uh, uh, it was used by us very long. And as, as I said, I was 22 years old. I, I was just 22 years ago. And I was just starting my arthroplasty practice. I was freshly come back from a one-year fellowship with Dr. Ranawat. So this was something which was new. We had two surgeries of uh, our great Bajpeji by Dr. Ranawat, and everything was buzzed about knee replacement. So this patient, we had done a all poly total knee replacement surgery, 2001. Patient was doing reasonably well. For initial, we used to use a lot of all poly implant at that point of time, because they had worked well with us, and they have given reasonably good results. But this patient, after three years, came back with a significant pain. She hasn't come back in between and say, my pay knee is very bad. So that is how she was, a total disaster. The whole proximal femur was, uh, proximal tibia was uh, gone. The implant has collapsed. And there was a significant amount of virus deformity and instability. So we did a sed rate. We did CRP, WPC count. We aspirated the knee joint to rule out there is any infection because it was just four years the implant has gone bad. Uh, everything was negative and so we planned for surgery of revision. So problem was basically the primary implant was size two because we know that the Indian females have very small bones. They put on a lot of body mass. So BMI is uh, 35 but size of bone is two. Now tibia size two, femur size two, obviously the revision implant cannot be much bigger than that. And you don't have too many options at size two revision, even at that point of time. Second was there was a loss of metaphyseal bone, and we had to reconstruct that. But again, in 2001, 2000, uh, 2004, we didn't have these sleeves and augments, and we didn't have a concept of having a three-zone fixation of an implant. All we have was a revision component and maybe cemented or a non-cemented stems. And patient has a huge amount of uh, size, but our leg also was edematous. Maybe she had a filarial edema, I do not know. But this is how she was looking. The tissues were not very tight, tissues were soft. So unlike filarial patient, when the tissues are very rigid because of edema. And uh, this is how she was. We didn't have any options, so we opened her up for revision. On table, we found the entire thing was collapsed. And we did a revision like this. Now, it doesn't look very good, right? Uh, the problem was the implant, this was a size 2 revision component which I used. And as you go in a tibia, and the rod also was thinnest and the longest rod because she couldn't accept anything beyond that. So if you see on the tibial side, if there is a bone loss, and if, as you go further and further down, the tibia start becoming narrow. And even if you use uh, augment below your base plate, the augment is vertically straight. There is no conical augment like some of the company giving us today. So that augment which we used was significantly more than the shaft which was there. So again, this was not looking very good. It was protruding, but as I said, we didn't have much option. We used something called as hybrid cementing technique. The proximal part was cemented. The long non-cemented stem was going down. And we had a non-cemented stem in a femur also. I thought it probably might work, but as I say, wishful thinking do not work in orthopedic. So another two, three years time, this patient came back. So this was how she was before the revision. This is how she was after the revision. And you can see that there is still some amount of virus left uh, uncorrected. And the problem again here is you do not have uh, in this system uh, uh, rods which can be put at, uh, you know, on, on, on the side. So we basically had offset rods where you can change the alignment. But with a straight rod, the implant will go according to the shaft of the bones. So we didn't have much option than correcting the overall virus. So she continued walking on that. She was good for the next three, four years, but again, four, five years down the line, then she started getting pain, and it was the femoral side which started becoming loose. And you can see that the femoral stem has started almost like a viper effect, and uh, maybe metaphyseal part of a femur was not fixed very well, or there was a further collapse of the metaphyseal bone. 
and she had a, a lot of pain in that area. So the issue now was that initial part, femur we thought would do well, but it hasn't. It has become loose and it was becoming uh, painful for her. The tibia which we thought was okay, or we will create it, but tibia was still holding okay. It didn't collapse so far in that period. And uh, re-revision was required. So we discussed with the patient and it was a quite difficult thing to do re-revision because we didn't have many options beyond that. Option at this stage was use sleeves and cones, but they were not available with us in India and we were not aware about those things. Cemented same revision, again, hinge knee implant. The problem again comes to the small size. You don't get very small size hinge knee also because these are all more, you know, adjusted to the Caucasian bones and a small Indian patient, even these knees are so big that you sometimes it is difficult to even close the wound after you have put, try to put the implant inside. So third option could have been the fusion, but again, with so much loss of bone, with such a large fat patient, and uh, doing a fusion with porotic thing was quite difficult situation. Now, eventually we spent almost about two, three weeks in trying to find out what we can do, and a patient saw the problem. She said, well, I don't want any more surgery. We didn't have to offer her. She was, by that time, about 86. She was quite obese. The legs on both sides has developed filar edema, and she was hardly you know, going from bed to toilet. So we didn't do any more surgery. That was the end of it. But we were lucky because she didn't demand anything more. Had she been younger, it would have been a little more difficult. Now, what did I learn from all these experience, which was in the beginning of my practice, almost 22, 23 years ago? Number one is even a minor varus placement was detrimental in obese patient, in osteoporotic bones, and especially if you're using all poly patella, because all poly tibia do not have a metal stability. So minor variation can cause sudden collapse of a bone below that. What did I learn? I learned that we need to have, in a small bones, you make sure that you have appropriate size implants. If you don't have those implants, it is difficult to start with the surgery and uh, you know, do a mess up of a job. We need offset stems to reduce overhang in a bone, and you have to find out system which can give you offset stem in different ways. Today we have got offset stem in various options, three millimeter or six millimeter offset, and they can be go around, around the clock. So we can actually place our implant on the available bone and reduce overhang like this. Then we need to have a non spinal stem. They should be longer and canal en engaging, so there should be more rigid fixation there. If you don't do that, they can easily become loose. Maybe short cemented stem would be better in this case because the patient was old, bones were little osteoporotic, and maybe uh, we could have saved the day had, had we used short cemented stem at that point of time. What did we learn again? A three zone concept which has been beautifully described in the previous two lectures is very essential. Today, if you are going to do revision of this particular patient, you need to have either a sleeve or a cone and a long stem so you can get a good metaphyseal fixation with a good diaphyseal stabilization so your implant can stay very well and it will not become loose in a short time. Only diaphyseal fixing implant with a, just a stem and a proximal plate, even if it is cemented, may not work very well beyond five to seven years. And last, what did I learn? If the patient has a filarial limbs, try not to meddle with it unless it is an emergency because these are very difficult cases. You may get infection, things may not get healed very well, and surgery itself is not very easy. It is quite difficult to do. Thank you very much.